All right. Hi, everybody. It's been a while since I've been around. I've been super busy doing stuff with my students, helping them prepare for college and all that sort of stuff. But College Board is shifting from the paper test to the digital test. And I figured, well, I should probably figure out what the heck is going on with this digital test, right? So, of course, I tried to download the app and tried to work through this new adaptive system. But, of course, it didn't work. So... Here I am, I still want to work through the problem, so I have a paper-based version of this. So I want to see what's different about this test, and then maybe later on I'll kind of record my thoughts as I work through these questions. So I promise I've not seen these questions before, so I'm going to work my way through it. I'm going to apply all the skills and knowledge I have from 15 years of teaching the SAT and ACT. I'm going to try to use my perfect score knowledge from the 2400 I got and the 1600 I got and then try to talk through all the questions as I see them. So without further ado, here I go. pages they love to take lots of pages and waste space I guess okay so this is a vocab one they want to complete with the most logical and precise words so that seems similar to the old one so former astronaut says although she doesn't have a definite idea of when it might happen she okay so it can't be demands or demands is very definite speculates is like you're wondering yeah she speculates she establishes so establishes his claims right so then the best word here would be speculates. It's like, ah, so, so. Okay, so then how do I deal with this? Do I have to move my face out of the way? Or I'll just move it down like this. Then you can still get to see my lovely face in the picture. So beginning in the 1950s, Navajo Nation legislator Annie Dodge Waneka continuously worked to promote public health. Continuously worked. So I'm seeing like some sort of duration. This impartial effort. Impartial means unbiased. So that doesn't have to go with that. This offhand, offhand means kind of like you're doing it in your spare time or something. Ah, there you go. Persistent, right? Persistent matches with continuously. So far, so good. This looks pretty easy. Okay, module one. Okay, so this is the first module, which I think is like they're trying to just kind of get your score. So if you answer more questions, right, you'll move up into a different module. Let's see. Following the principles of community-based participatory research tribal nations and research institutions are equal partners so i see the word equal that seems important a collaboration between the crow tribe and the montana state university exemplifies maybe is trying to showcase this model give an example of there's a colon here tribal nations circumvents means to prevent eclipses means to overshadow fabricate means to like fake or make up so yeah, I think exemplifies works the best there. Given that conditions in the binary star system should make planetary formation nearly impossible, it's not surprising that the existence of planets in such systems has lacked a clear explanation, maybe? That's a technique some people do, right? They come up with a word itself, so maybe a clear, a definite maybe would be a word that I'd come up with. A discernible something you can figure out a straightforward okay there's there's not been a simple right clear I think is synonymous with simple and straightforward there has lacked an inconclusive no well it, it wouldn't lack an inconclusive inconclusive means there's not enough data right it would have an abundance of that and unbiased just doesn't work here right we're not talking about bias or bias um, has lacked a discernible explanation I think yeah, discernible means you can like see it or understand it or can like make it out usually with your eyes or you can hear it. So I don't think that's what we're going for here because discernible would be for something maybe that's a little bit closer to you. So I think straightforward works best there. Oh, I went out of order. The parasitic daughter plant increases reproductive success by flowering at the same time as the host plant it has latched onto. Ooh, sounds gross. In 2020, this guy, or this woman, and his, oh, his colleague, 
determine that the tiny daughter achieves this synchronization, right? Because it says at the same time. That's evidence-based. Uh, and utilizing the protein the host produces when it's about to flower. Yeah, synchronization is the only one that makes the most sense there. There's evidence to confirm it, right? There's nothing about hibernation. Um, prediction. The scientists are predicting, but not the plant, right? And the plant's not moderating either. These words just don't work. Uh, okay, so then we have this director. He has a tendency to situate native characters in the distance past. This rejection is evidence in his series. It's a rejection, right? So this colon is, is showing an explanation. So he's rejecting it. Repudiate is a fancy way of saying reject. This is one of the vocab words I had to learn when I was taking the SAT in 2003. So I guess vocab is back. Um, is he proclaiming? No, proclaiming would show similarity. Fortella is showing like he's going to do it. Recants is to take back. It's like you say you're going to do something, but you're like, oh, never mind. I didn't mean it. And so that's not quite the same as repudiate, right? Repudiate is he's purposely saying the opposite or doing something to showcase the op opposite there. Uh, I hope I'm right so far, yeah. Okay, now we're doing reading. Captchas, okay. The main purpose, okay, so main purpose. I look at the verbs, right? Discuss, to explain, to call attention to, to indicate. So they're all pretty neutral. Let's see. So we have the scientist who's working on converting printed books into digital format. He found some words were distorted enough that digital scanners couldn't recognize them, but most humans could easily read them based on that finding. Von An invented a simple security test to keep automated bots out of websites. Ah, you know when I do CAPTCHAs, I can hardly read them sometimes. Um, okay. I still get them wrong, too. Correct answers pr prove the users were human and added to the book digitizing product. I always learn such interesting things from the SAT stuff. So, to discuss, yeah. Uh, was it the reCAPTCHA? Okay, I think this is a possible answer. This is too broad, right? Digital scanners. Uh, to call attention. It wasn't the book digitizing pro project. It didn't say its popularity. Okay, this was pretty straightforward. Okay, I didn't think it, I thought it'd be harder than that. Um, let me move my head over here for this one. The following text is from Edith Wharton's book. Oh, I think I read one of Edith Wharton's, Edith Wharton's plays. Uh, okay, they're walking through a park. Lily had no real intimacy with nature, but she had a passion for the appropriate and could keenly could be keenly sensitive into a scene, which was the fitting background of her own sensations. Huh. She didn't care about nature, but she'd like to be in her own head, I guess that's what it's saying. The landscape outspread below her seemed an enlargement of her present mood, and she found something of herself in its calmness, its breadth, and its long free reaches. So she's kind of like one with nature, I guess, but not nature, like whatever her landscape is. On the nearer slopes, the sugar maples wavered like pyres of light. Lower down was a massing of gray orchids, so there's just description here. So this would be description. Which choice best describes the function of the underlying sentence? So showing her, I'm not looking at the answers yet, so I'm thinking like it's showing her feelings, showing her mood. It creates a detailed image. Uh, the, that would be this part, so I feel like A is a distractor. It's showing the second, the third sentence. Um, I don't see the conflict. Yeah, there wasn't like push or pull. It makes an assertion that the, that the next sentence expands on. No, I don't think the next sentence expands on it. It's just kind of just like explaining the setting. It illustrates an idea that is introduced in the previous sentence. Okay, this is a standard SAT question. This hasn't changed since the last version. Um... This is how a lot of stories go, right? You just have the opening and then you like give some concrete detail to kind of showcase what you're really meaning, right? You're you're showing instead of telling. So I'm really confident that's D just because that's very standard SAT question. Okay, let's see what's going on here. 
So then, let me just read the question first. The, which choice best states the function of the underlying sentence? Again, function, okay, what is it doing? So we have some background here. It looks like there's this professor and he makes a suggestion that exposure to sunshine during the workday can lead to overly optimistic behavior. Interesting. Huh. Um, using data from blah, 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 the team compared over 29,000 annual earnings forecasts to the actual earnings later reported by those companies. The team found that the greater the exposure to sunshine and work the two weeks before a manager submitted the earnings forecast, the more the managing manager's forecast exceed. Oh, well, that's interesting. So um, this is very standard in, um, if you know the Jane Schaefer method, right? So this would be like the topic sentence. And then this would be the, the concrete detail. That's what she calls it. And this would be the, the commentary, right? You're explaining or you're describing why that data is relevant to your claim. So we're not summarizing. We don't summarize until the fourth or fifth sentence in a Schaefer paragraph. Um, to present a specific example, that's definitely what concrete detail is. To explain the methodology. So methodology is like the who, what, when, where, why um, using the team study um, and like how you did it. And I don't think there's the how part here. So C seems like um, it's a distractor because I think methodology is too specific of a word to be captured in one sentence. So I don't think it's C. And then to call out a challenge the team face, no. So yeah. Um, hmm. Is it a specific example yet? It's the problem is it's not a specific example though too. Shoot. Yeah, it wasn't a specific example. So this is the distractor then. So B, from me, I'm fairly used to this one, right? You usually provide a specific example, but because it's not specific, it shouldn't be B. It actually should be C. So that one keyword A, right? I think that's the thing that makes B wrong. And I think what helps with C is it says just part of it. It doesn't explain the entire methodology. It just said, oh, they found some of this example. It wasn't a completely thorough explanation. Hmm. Interesting. Okay. So then we have a poem. I've, I started noticing this, that they're going to bring poetry because why not? Poetry's fun, right? Um, I didn't make that when I was 16 for sure. Okay. So poet of our race, 1910. So they're keeping older passages on this test. Thou with stroke of mighty pen hast told of joy and mirth and read the hearts and souls of men as cradled from their birth the language of the flowers thou hast read them all and even the little brook responded to thy call so this sounds like some maybe god or some really good author oh okay is a writer so praise a writer for being especially perceptive yeah has read the hearts and souls of men yep people in nature i see the language of flowers yep okay so i see this i think this is a fairly Straightforward one. Let's check the other ones though. To establish a certain writer as read. No, with stroke of mighty pen, right? Pen means you're writing, you're not reading. To call attention to the writer's careful and elaborately detailed writing process. No, I don't see anything about the writing process, right? It's like, oh, you write for everybody. To recount fond memories of an afternoon. No, that's too specific there. Okay, yeah, that one was fairly simple. Um, but I'm used to reading poetry too, so if you have any questions, let me know. I can even like try to explain what some of those words are. Um, okay, let's see what we have here. We have another 1906. Okay, they're reaching back. Um, okay, according to the text, what is true about mother? So let's see what's true about mother. Mother did not spend all her time in paying dull visits to dull ladies and sitting dully at home waiting for dull ladies to pay visits to her. Okay. She was almost always there ready to play with the children. So mom is playful maybe and read to them and help them do their home lessons so mom is involved she's not boring besides this she used to write stories for them and while they're at school and read them aloud after tea and she always made up funny pieces of poetry for their birthdays and for other great occasions so mom is a fun involved mom um, she wishes that more ladies would visit her no she did not right she did not that's the opposite birthdays are her favorite okay so 
SAT is still pulling these tricks, right? This extreme word probably isn't true. She recreates stories and poems for her children. Yes, she does, right? She used to write stories for them. Yep. While they were at school. And read them aloud. And she made a funny piece of poetry. Okay, so this is direct evidence. Read again. So her favorite, right? So that's a distractor. The BND show extreme words in there. So let's be careful with those extreme words. Let's see. Okay, so to you. Oh, 1856, over 150 years old. Okay, so Whitman suggests that readers whom he addresses directly have not fully understood themselves writing blank. So we want to sh find a quote where they show they don't understand themselves. You have not known what, okay. You have not known what you are. And you have slumbered upon yourself all your life, okay. That kind of works. Your eyelids have been the same clothes most of the time. Yeah, so maybe they're sleeping. Maybe he's just saying you're blind to yourselves. Meadows. No. Meadows are like grasslands, right? I should have made my way straight to you long ago. I should have blabbed nothing but you. I should have chanted nothing but you. Mm, that's like he's saying he's pointing at himself there. I will leave all and come and make hymns of you. None has understood you, but I understand you. Okay, no, no, this was a you thing, right? You don't understand yourselves. So I think that one's clear, pretty clearly A. Okay. A Quechua speaking family in the Andes Mountains, Peru, Martin Chambi, is today considered one of the most renowned figures of Latin American photography. In a paper for an art history class, a student claims that Chambi's photographs have considerable ethnographic value in his work. Shambi was able to capture diverse elements of Peruvian society representing his work subjects with both dignity and authenticity. Okay, so we want to support that claim. So he's renowned. He's considerable ethnographic value, so it's good for culture. He's diverse, is both dignified and authentic. Okay, lots of really positive words there. Uh, Okay, so he did wealthy Peruvians, but he also produced hundreds of images. Okay, maybe, right? Hundreds of images, too. Yeah, considerable ethnic... So this, yeah, this totally works for ethnographic value. Okay, let's look at B. B says he demonstrates a high level of skill. Um, I don't see anything skilled. Like, there's not any yeah, synonym for there, so I don't think it's B. He was known and celebrated in and outside of Peru. That's more about how people reacted to him, right? And we want to show why he's the most renowned figures. I guess it kind of shows renown, but then it doesn't. No, the claim is here. So, oh, okay. So this has nothing to even do with the claim. Oh, so this is a distractor because this kind of backs up the first sentence. Ooh, that's tricky. Um, and then some of the people, places, Shambi photographed have long been popular subjects. That does that's no that doesn't deal with him specifically. So yeah, this is the only one where I can like tie something into the text. So just like the current text, to current test as it is, we're finding evidence to back up our claim. Okay. That hasn't changed yet. Ooh, interesting. So we have a graph here. Okay, so we have this. Okay, so it looks like they're giving. A bunch of what they've done looks like this guy Edwin has been really prolific huh number of films Wow I guess it was easier to direct a film back then um, okay some researchers studying indigenous actors and filmmakers okay they've turned their attention to the early days of cinema in fact, so many films and associated records for this area have been lost that counts of these four figures output should have been taken as bare minimums rather than totals. Okay, so it's entirely possible. Okay, so these might be an underestimate then is what this is saying. Um, no, Dark, Star, Dark Cloud acted in significantly fewer. No, it'd have to be more, right? Um... Okay, yeah, I think it's C, right? Edwin Carew's 47 credited acting roles 
includes only films made after no and i don't like this only thing either like when you're saying that there's not enough information to use the word only it seems really really weird um again only right uh, only also shows like a you're trying to de-emphasize or diminish right and we're saying wait they must have done way more than that so that's why it's not b or d so far section one looks pretty straightforward but i think that's why it is it's the norming one right i think module two would be the hard one okay so we have some plants some latin names there okay some data so we have these scientists they examine several plots the research calculated that if plants were randomly distributed on this landscape, only about 15% would be with other plants. They counted the number of juvenile plants of five species, and the number growing alone on bare ground, and compared those. So there's the patches, and there's the bare ground. They claim that the plants of these species that grow in close proximity to other plants gain an advantage at an early developmental stage. Something that shows an advantage that if they grow in proximity to other plants. So a patch, it looks like it was another word for like growing together so i think that's what makes this harder to understand so we're trying to show that growing together in patches is good for all five species less than 75 percent of juvenile plants um we're trying to show an advantage right to show less than i don't think is an advantage so i don't think it's a Okay, this is just pointing at one plant, but it doesn't show why it's an advantage. For these two plants, the percentage do know is less than what we... No, again, less, right? I don't think that's showing an advantage. For each plant, the percentage of juvenile plants growing in patches of vegetation was substantially higher than would be expected if the plants are randomly distributed. There you go. So they expected, right? They expected 15%. But then when they checked, it was all like 50%, right? So then why would animals or plants do anything in nature if it weren't for something that made their life easier? And then we're trying to support this claim, right? So advantage, so we want positive language. We don't want less or only or those types of words. And then B is just... I don't even know. It's just not B because it doesn't give an example of why it's a good thing, right? This points out a plan. Okay, what do we have? We have two plants. They establish themselves on soilless, nutrient poor patches of rock. Interesting how plants can grow on nutrient poor patches of rock. Um, so we have these scientists, these microscopes. They have clusters of fine hairs near the root tip. So sometimes I like to like draw figures or something. So here's my plant, right? And then here's the roots. And there's the fine hairs down here. This reinforces what I'm reading. Further analysis indicate that these hairs secrete both malic and citric acids. Interesting. Malic and citric acids are those things that um, make like those sour patch kids. It's the thing that make them really sour and make your lips pucker. Um, the process not only created channels for continued growth, but also releases phosphates that provide vital nutrient phosphorus. Okay, phosphates provide phosphorus, go figure. Um, so we want to support the hypothesis. So the hypothesis is that we want to dissolve the rocks, so dissolving of rocks. Mm, okay, others doesn't support it, right? So usually others or many are is kind of a distractor there. Same as in previous tests. Um, in different proportions, that doesn't support your claim either, right? It's just saying in different proportions. Um, 
car yeah carving right so the they they dissolve they depend on dissolving underlying rocks with acids right so carving sounds like you're dissolving the rock so i like c and then d okay they thrive when they go to surfaces that do not contain phosphate so that would weaken the argument right so d is a weaken because the whole argument is saying that they need the phosphates and if they're saying it's vital so that's why it's not d okay 17 so we have this dinosaur okay massive sizes to uh to increase plant production resulting from higher levels of atmospheric co2 carbon dioxide so there's a lot of co2 in the atmosphere during that time period um, however there's no evidence of significant spikes of carbon dioxide levels coinciding with relevant periods in sauropod evolutions so there's no evidence uh, such as when they first appeared when several sauropod lineages other underwent further evolution toward gigantism or when sauropods reach their maximum known sizes so there is this hypothesis was it a hypothesis oh they have attributed so they just said it was true so we're actually providing evidence to the contrary there is no evidence of co2 so we can't say that the fluctuations affected them differently we don't even know that there's fluctuations uh the evolution of large body sites did not depend yeah okay so the hypothesis was that because there was high co2 then there is uh more mass in the thing right but because we don't know this part then we don't know that it led to the mass increasing there is no evidence yeah sauropods probably would not have evolved to such immense sizes no we can't say that too right um yeah you can't say that the opposite is true like ice cream gives me gas so if i if i don't eat ice cream then i don't know then i will never have gas the rest of my life or something like that yeah logical fallacy right there okay what do we have we want to logically complete the text again so in documents called judicial opinions judges explain that reasoning behind their legal rulings and in explanations they sometimes cite and discuss historical and contemporary philosophers then we have this person who argues that while judges are naturally inclined to mention philosophers whose views align with their own positions the strongest judicial opinions consider and rebut potential objections. Discussing philosophers whose views conflict with judges' views could therefore... Hmm. So, judges are naturally inclined to mention people whose views align with their own. That's called confirmation bias. So then the strongest opinions would consider multiple points of views without needing to consult philosophical works. That's not the point of this, right? You want a judge who considers lots of points of views. Discussing philosophers whose views conflict with judges' views could therefore help judges improve their arguments. That's true. Right, the strongest judicial opinions consider and rebut potential objections. Yeah, so improve their arguments. That's another way of saying that, right? To consider and rebut objections. That's improving your argument. Make judicial opinions more comprehensible. That's not the point. The whole point is we want the strongest, or we want... Where did it go? Oh, we want to consider and rebut potential objections. That's that's the claim. Bring judicial align. align the side of broadly held alone. No, the philosophers are dead, right? A lot of them are gone. Yeah, so the claim is we want stronger arguments. Okay, I'm going to go this way this time. Hmm. We want to confirm, conform to the conventional standards of English. Okay, so it's a pronoun question. This has been around since I took the SAT. So, um, for example, Japan achieved a 40% reduction in plastic bag use after cashiers were instructed to ask customers 
whether they we're talking about customers right always find your antecedent when you are looking for pronouns this one's easy peasy lemon lemonade okay we want to conform to standards of english so without even looking i'm already going to eliminate c and d because i know that the sat does not differentiate between a period and a semicolon provided everything else is the same so we need to see if it is an explanation or not so we have in ancient greece an epicurean was a follower of epicurus epicurus a philosopher whose belief revolved around the pursuit of pleasure epicurus defined pleasure as the absence of pain in the body and of trouble in the soul positing that all life's virtues derive from this absence so we have a dependent clause followed by a participial phrase and a is better than b because it's almost as if he's doing those two actions simultaneously right he's in his definition he posits these ideas right posits is to like make a claim versus b is almost like You'd be setting up the opinion and then explaining the opinion in the next half, right? But in the sentence, it's almost two halves of the argument. And then it's also furthered by the independent clause followed by a dependent clause. So definitely A. Okay, so we have a there, there, it's, it's. This hasn't changed either. So let's see, is it a they? It's probably there, right? There. Always say they are if you see this one, right? They are. And say this one is it is just so you know. But it looks like we're talking about Watson and Crick, right? Uh, but it is misleading to say that Watson and Crick discovered the double helix. Their findings, yeah, it is a plural. There's two of them. Okay, let's see here. Okay, we're trying to see if there's another positive, maybe? So where does the sentence start? So we have anime Wong who had portrayed numerous villains and secondary characters but never got a heroine, finally got a starring role in Paramount Pictures' Daughters of Shanghai, a film that critic uh, Stina Chin, Stina? Christina, maybe? Stina Chin? Um, so this is a necessary, essential, a positive. We don't want to set off the name. If you put the comma, you should be able to read the sentence without the name. And so critic claims which critic you need to know the name and then claims and then this is called an embedded quote right so it, the sentence is supposed to flow it's not like you're doing dialogue in a sentence so i think a lot of people would want to put the name in commas but the name is necessary and then a lot of people like to put commas before quotations because that's what they were taught but the sat loves the embedded quote instead in which you don't use the comma before the quote Oh, the, this was interesting. They mentioned this a lot during the Bitcoin hullabaloo in 2019. That was a very boomer phrase, hullabaloo. Um, okay, so we have tulip skyrocketing. And then with single bulbs of rare varieties selling up for up to the equivalent of 200,000. Wow, I didn't know it was that bad. But some historians claim. Claim, right? Simple verb tense. Yeah, because then you have a dependent, independent clause, right? That this tulip mania was the first historical instance of an acid bubble, which occurs, yeah. So independent clause followed by a dependent clause. Researchers studying the da 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 have determined that why some soil dwelling roundworms in the southern hemisphere move in opposite directions of the Earth's magnetic field when searching for food. Food. I think it might be A. <laughs> so we'd have an independent clause here and let's check oh have determined why right so it gives you okay they've de determined the cause and let's see i think this is the cause then right in the northern hemisphere the magnetic field points down into the ground but in the southern hemisphere it points up towards the surface and away from worms food sources okay yeah this is a perfect example of a colon then so colon is preceded by an independent clause and then it is followed by some sort of explanation. Um, if you're not careful, I think D is a trap answer, right? When searching for food in the Northern Hemisphere, you kind of just read it. 
but then if you read the second sentence like this it kind of makes sense that this would be its own sentence right in the north and then in the south so there you go colon example sat loves colons let's see oh another it it they they okay so let's see so unlike other species turtle barnacles uh, can dissolve the cement like secretions they use to attach themselves right they're attaching their bodies so that's when you use self right it's a, a reflexive thing i pat myself i brush myself um i bathe myself yeah so they are attaching themselves and there's many of them okay so then we have the children board games shoots and ladders i hated this game it was so annoying um in both games players encounter good or bad space while traveling along a path landing on one of the good ones so this idea landing on one of the good spaces so this is called a gerund and a gerund or you can just think you ignore the participial or prepositional phrases but gerunds are singular so landing allows a player to skip ahead and arrive closer to the end goal uh, Yeah, I guess it's not a colon here because it's not an exact explanation. It's just further talking about the game. Okay, let's see. So then we need to see where the sentence stops here. So in 1943, in the midst of WW2, we have Grace Hopper was recruited by the U.S. military to help the war effort by solving complex equations. Hopper's subsequent career would involve more than just equations, though. Right, so we're contrasting the previous sentence, so we want the though in the first half. Another thing that they do test on the current SAT is they, though is a conjunctive adverb. Right, so that what that means is it needs punctuation around it, so it's definitely not D. It's not part of its phrase, it's just a word by itself that's helping contrast. Um, and then again, it's going to be the colon because they're explaining her subsequent career, right? Her subsequent career as a pioneering computer programmer, so that'd be different from the math equations, right? She did the computer programming. It's explaining her new career. Hopper would help usher in the digital age. Very standard SAT type question. Okay, it conforms to the standards. Oh, and look at this. This is going to be a dangling modifier. We see dangling. We see subjects switching around. It was Henry. Without even reading it, I'm going to guess it's A because we have the rain and the rain here. So it's probably not going to be that. And then it is an ambiguous pronoun. We usually want a clear pronoun. So let's see if I am right. Yeah, let's look at the sentence. It says, upon recovering two years later. Who recovered two years later? It was Henry. So this is one that students miss all the time, and of course, I'm not surprised to see this one here. Um, we want transition words here. Let's see. So although novels and poems are considered distinct literary forms, many authors have created hybrid works that incorporate elements of both. Bernadine Evaristo's The Emperor's Babe, for example, is a verse novel, a book-length narrative complete with characters and plot, but conveyed in short, crisp lines. Yep. So this is the uh, very standard type of question, right? We're talking about novels and books in general. So that's your topic sentence, and then you dive into your concrete detail by giving a specific example. Okay. Am I almost done? At two weeks old, their time in critical socialization period begins. Wolves can smell, but not yet see or hear. That's so weird that these mammals are born like completely blind. Um, domestic dogs by contrast. It looks like it's a contrast thing. Can see, right? By contrast. I think it's going to be this one by the end of two weeks. So, yeah. Okay. Easy. Contrast. And then two things of similar size, right? One example, another example versus the last one was a broad example, right? And then you narrow down into something specific. Okay, 31, let's see. So we have a researcher. They reported that while mathematicians may have traditionally worked alone, evidence points to a shift in the opposite direction. There is a shift from alone. I think it's going to be increasingly, right? It's not a reason. It's just a fact, right? There's a fact. 
an increasing amount of mathematicians that are choosing to collaborate with their peers. A trend, right? So it's a trend, another reason why you choose increasingly. Um, yeah. Okay, I think that one's pretty straightforward. Oh, more, 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 more. Oh my gosh. Oh, two more questions. We can do it. I believe in us. Okay, so then, oh, this is interesting. I haven't seen this. So they've taken the following notes. Students wants to present the study and its findings, which choice most effectively uses the relevant information to accomplish this goal. Okay, so I think it was pterosaur, pterodactyls? Okay, and then we found pterosaur jaw bones. Uh, she used advanced microscope techniques to determine that the bones had few line growths. Okay, so they found a juvenile pterosaur. Wants to present the study and its findings. That's, <laughs> I don't think you'd want to say you're unsure. That doesn't get, get the bang for your buck out. Uh, this one's okay. Ah, this is interesting, right? It gets the researcher in, it talks about her techniques. Yeah, it describes who they are. Let's see, what about D? Yeah, we're trying to like present the study and its findings. Analyze it. Okay, we wanna present the study and its findings. This one doesn't show the findings. So I think they put all the buzzwords in here and like, oh my gosh, that looks cool. Um, and thus belong to juveniles. I feel like it's D, but let's see. Um, present the study and its findings. This one doesn't have its findings though, is the thing. And it says present, so I guess C doesn't quite go into, like it goes into more of the methodology again. We found that word earlier, right? Oh, that one's a tricky one. I think the SAT was trying to make one of them sound really right again, and that wasn't the point of that one. Okay, so we have the same thing here. So we have African-American women played a prominent role, civil rights activists, so we have a specific one. We have another civil rights activist. We have Hedgeman, okay, and then Bates. Okay, and then they want to compare the two contributions. Which choice most effectively uses the relevant information? Okay, well, it's, this doesn't, doesn't compare the two. It just mentions one of them, right? So not that one. Um, This one's kind of general, right? And they want to contribute to the March on Washington, so that's why it's not B. Um, okay, and then D is purposefully vague, right? One spoke at the March, which one, right? So then this one's a little bit more straightforward, right? It says they're equal in size and in structure, right? Although blah, blah, blah did this, blah, blah, blah did that. So then this one's C. Okay. So that is where we are with section one. Um, I'm gonna take a break here, but I don't know. Let me know if you have any questions. Um, this honestly just seems like a similar version of the SAT that I had, we'd been working on since 2016. So, so far so good. Hope this helps.